In this edition of NYMR TV, we feature a chat with Pete Waterman, one of the most successful music producers around with a string of hit records to his name. However, it's his role as patron of the Bridge and Wheels appeal that we're interested in. The interview was filmed at the Railway Museum in York on Saturday the 28th of November 2009. I was asked to be, called, you know, to head the appeal up because um, I guess appeals are the bridge appeal is unusual. Appeal for engines, appeals for coaches, yeah, they're they're sort of common. But to appeal for a bridge, which is you can't really see it, it's just there, and you know. But of course, it's crucial. And I thought, well, this is an interesting one because it is. It's about a fundamental appeal. It's about keeping the railway open. And this, and you know, it, without this bridge, it, it, it will close. You know, the bridge itself is a very old structure now, and it, you know, it was made of cast iron, and it's come, just simply come to the end of its life. You know, the, the metal is no longer viable, it's starting to crumble. Um, I mean, we tend to forget that metal does at some point just, just break down again, and that's what that bridge is doing, and it has to be replaced. And literally, you, you, you can't get away with it, because I think it's about a mile from Gromont, so the rest of the line is cut off if we don't replace that one bridge. It's, it's, it's a pretty crucial structure, really. And, it, you know, and I can't think of many other railways that have structures as crucial, and that's, that's why this is a, quite a unique appeal. It's, it's, it's an interesting one, this. If this was network rail, nobody would be questioning you replacing it. But because we've got this preserved railway tag, it's, it's a sort of... You've got to ask people to give when really I don't, you know, when it comes to these sort of things, I think these are the things where we should be part of the community and they should be just taken, like if a road, if a hole in a road appeared, that everybody with the council would fill it up and nobody would even know about it. What I find very strange, and you know, at the moment I'm leading this big campaign for the government uh, about apprentices, and part of that claim is how important heritage railways are. Um, I find it amazing that the government did not know, this is our government, did not know how important these railways were. And when you tell them of the overall numbers of people visiting, of how much money is generated and how many jobs, we're a pretty impressive industry. And when you look at North Yorkshire Moors, it's up there in the top five. I mean, this is one of the big railways. So if we're talking to government, you have to hold up as a, a shining light because, you know, look, what, what happens in this one community, thanks to what started off, what you could say, with anoraks wanting to play trains, has now become a very serious business and very important to our community and more important to the, to the economy because some of the jobs that are being kept alive um, you know, by the uh, heritage railways are crucial, absolutely crucial. You know, they're not, um, these are not pretend jobs, these are real jobs. These are old-fashioned standard engineering jobs. And so, you know, I've at last got the government to understand we're not playing trains. North Yorkshire Moor is not about playing trains. It's about creating jobs. We just use playing trains as an excuse to create jobs because it sounds a bit sexier. Oh, the, the appeal will be successful. It's how quick we can make it successful. And that's the, that's the real crucial thing. It's not that it's going to be successful. It will be successful. But we've got to make it quick because that bridge must be repaired in this small gap in this, in this winter must be finished before the, the, the summer season. We've seen what happened to the Seven Valley when they lost a season. It was catastrophic. I mean, you know, we had to go to the government and get a handout of ten and a half million pound because, you know, what that did to the economy was unbelievable. The railway has bounced back. We don't want that to happen here. Though. It's just, you know, we don't want to have to keep going to the government with our cap in our hands, even though it's probably socially just. We don't want to do that. We never have. I mean, we've built these railways actually via volunteers and people wanting to travel on them. You know, it is a fantastic success story in that, in that way. We have not, you know, built our, our railways on, you know, going to the government. We've, some of us have had handouts, but they've not been massive handouts. You know, we've, we've done this by our enthusiasm and our endeavours. You know, these are perfect companies because the, the members of the board are the people that work on the, you know, on the stations or on the trains. They're all part of it. It's a fantastic role model. MYMRTV is important because, of course, if you can't get to the moors that weekend, you can watch it on YouTube. It's fantastic. And more importantly, there are places that you don't know we're watching it. 
that might just think one day when they decide to come to England for the holiday, I'll nip up and have a look at this. And, and you know, and that's what the great thing about YouTube is. Young people that watch my TV series over and over and over and over again. You know, it's incredible that the power of YouTube. And they do want to see the real thing, so they will they will search it out.